Thank you so much, <laughs> dear distinguished guests, dear presidents, and there are so many here, uh, uh, and, the, uh, and the audience. Thank you for coming, and it's such a great honor to get this award. I am flattered, honored, and humbled. Um, some 12 years ago, or uh, uh, 14 years ago, I bought a house um, close to my office in Istanbul in a rundown neighborhood of Chukurjuma. Um, I already at that time had an idea what, we, what to do with it. I wanted to convert a building into a museum and imagine, um, uh, uh, write a story of an imaginary family living in that building. I wanted to write a novel about an imaginary family living in a real building the, uh, and convert the imaginary life of the people in the real building into a story, since I'm a novelist, into a novel. In fact, I conceived the museum, the Museum of Innocence, and the novel, the Museum of Innocence, together, and went in, uh, and experimented, took chances, took risks um, to publish a book one day, to publish a book and open a museum at, in the same day, and thinking, um, imagining in my mind that the novel would be more or less the catalog a catalog of the museum. At the beginning, I was thinking that um, the catalog of the museum, uh, the annotated catalog of the museum, will be in the shape of a novel. Let's think of an annotated museum catalog without pictures, where the annotations are manipulated in such a way that it reads like a novel. I uh, saw I ventured into a sort of a literary, conceptual, literary, and artistic project. In the end, I finished off. The museum is open, the novel is finished, and they are operating together, and people are even coming, <laughs> including Mr. Barroso. Just, uh, just this Monday, he was in Istanbul, so we had fun. Um, um, of course, I had many ideas about what are the power of objects to bring back the past time, um, the, the relationship between memory and objects. Um, the logic of my story, the logic of the museum would be such that, that all the things that are, the, all the main objects that my characters in the story that they touched, that they, uh, the things that they saw, the things that they smelled, the things that they um, were engaged with, will be exhibited in the museum. And, and not only that, they also the story will tell how come we have a museum in which all these objects were put together. Um, in the end, I thought of, uh, um, in the end, I thought of a love story. Um, the conceit is that that the hero of the story is so so infatuated with love, so much that he collects everything his beloved touches. So, um, the, uh, then I begin to think. Then I am going to collect many many objects, exhibit them in a museum, then tell the story of this exhibition in such a way that the poetics of the museum will, will also be clear. This was a long process. I was writing my novel uh, both thinking of that this will be a sort of a conceptual catalog of a museum, but also will be a novel that people who do not come to Istanbul will read it. Some of my readers will think that uh, there is no museum, uh, but there is a novel. So I ventured into a process of both 
collecting objects with an eye on A, the museum, B, the, um, the novel itself. Um, in a way, I was uh, um, collecting objects from flea markets, from friends, from anyone that I, uh, that I shared the same culture with. One part of my mind was also busy with this, that in the end, my story, which covers essentially the second half of 20th century, um, the, um, and, the, and the people I describe in the book were secular, middle class, and upper middle class people of Istanbul. Their culture, their objects, their habits, um, their rituals, their, um, their literature, their music, the films they look at it, will all be exhibited in a modest museum, mod, a museum of city of Istanbul in the second half of 20th century. So I, um, uh, the logic of the making and writing of the novel was that I was, say, looking at this. Wow, what an interesting thing. Why don't my, one of my characters own it, touch it, or get engaged with it so that I can put it in my story? I collected and collected things um, and uh, according uh, and in a parallel way wrote my story. In the end, I also converted the real building uh, with the help of architect friends into a museum space. I didn't want my museum to be an old-fashioned government museum, but I also wanted to, since I'm a failed artist, wanted to be a museum with all the um, um, idiom and style of the new museum languages. In a way, um, I, in, I did a, a contemporary art project, a city museum, and a, a museum following, following my own humors. Um, and as I did this, all, um, as I did this, I was also noticing that I am actually preserving some part of Istanbul. My if the Museum of Innocence as a, uh, as a museum um, uh, it, it is a gathered up objects, uh, the first object of my collection was the building. Once I had the building with an eye that it will be converted into a museum, then I took my project seriously and continued and, uh, co uh, collecting things. I care, novels, real novels are about normal people and our daily lives. Before modernity, we had, our stories were about kings and rulers and monarchs. But modernity and various democratic revolutions bought us a new way of telling the story telling the story of a normal, humble person as if he is a king. This is, say, James Joyce Ulysses. Um, we had this democratic revolution in literature, but not in museums, which still represent the state, the power, big institution, important person, who wants to exhibit his achievement of the, not only the important piece, but the achievement of the nation, institution, the ruler, so forth and so on. Um, I also wrote, as I opened my museum and published my novel, a sort of a manifesto for uh, small museums, arguing that the representative power of the big institutions, the representative, uh, the, uh, demands of the states and big communities crush the individua our individualities. Look what, uh, what did art of the novel uh, did to the humanity. Um, instead of epics of the kings or how so and so king and killed this lion, we have the simple story of one simple person. Why? Don't museums do the same? Pay more, don't pay attention to the nation, to the community, to the institution, to the ruler, to the powerful, but pay attention to the little details 
of our daily lives. For that, I argue that we need small museums. Not that we need a lot of money. Yes, if governments, big institutions, this or that, give us money, take the money, but share it with others and, may, and, and express yourselves in small museums. Another subject that I want to go into, of course, is, um, is the uh, cultural heritage of Europe. Um, uh, once we begin talking about Europe, we have to ask ourselves, what makes Europe distinct, different from other continents, other uh, cultural de uh, developments? Everyone has kings, rulers, palaces, this or that. Um, but what made Europe come in, in, uh, um, um, as an example was, I, uh, I would say, liberté, égalité, fraternité. That the, uh, the, uh, Europe is an example for the rest of humanity and con still continues to be like that because it cherished these ideas. The same goes for the culture that um, that the uh, European, from Balzac to Dickens, uh, art of the novel, is being imitated after mid-19th century by the whole globe. If you go to China, everyone is writing novels, and it's a European um, invention. These, uh, not only architecture of Europe, but the values and culture of Europe should be preserved, but not in a very strong European nationalist, nationalist way, but in a critical way. Let's respect the achievements of Europe, let's honor it, enjoy it, share it, enlarge it, but let's also do it in a very critical way. European values, Europe, um, is for us an example or a problematical entity, um, 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 is a mirror that the rest of the humanity had measured itself continuously in the last 200 years. It continues to be like that, um, but um, it continues to be like that because it still, it should still problematize its liberté Egalité, fraternity. These are, um, if, uh, if Europe is going to problematize its mirror image in other cultures, that um, we should pay attention to its rich cultural heritage. And Europe's rich cultural heritage is not only about preserving architecture, paying respect to all sorts of cultural institutions, but it's also about its core values. We have to discuss these core values more. For me, preserving Europe's heritage is, all, is also engaging in a severe discussion with all these values. I'm very, very flattered and honored by this prize. Thank you so much.